Hello, welcome to Map and Lens. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a different video this one. This is going to be taking a look at the uh, bike that we did our most recent uh, road trip video on. Taking a look at some of the issues that's, um, that's happened to it as a result of that and seeing what we can do to try and make them a bit better if we can. Um, at the minute the bike's off the road um, with, with two of these issues. So let's have a little look. Okay, so this is our bike. It's our NT700. Um, that we uh, that we took our road trip out, and if you haven't seen the video yet, if I can work out, I'll make YouTube do a little pop up. Um, that'll appear somewhere on screen now. Okay, so one of the issues is that the left side pannier lock uh, will no longer work. So you can see there, uh, the latches just don't take, and it doesn't work. Uh, so that's something that we need to look at. But bigger than that, the real problem at the minute is just behind this plastic cover here, so if we pop that down and I don't know if you can see that, but this is a water pump cover and that is a fairly large hole and that's the reason, that's what caused the problem and that's what uh, meant that the bike had to be uh, recovered back from Scotland so what we're going to do today is we're going to see if we can hopefully get this off, we've got a new cover ordered from Fowlers of Bristol um, so they shipped that and they got that here in one day which is really good um, so it looks like I've chatted to the mechanic who inspected the bike um, up in Scotland in Auburn and it should be a simple matter of one, two, three and I think there's a fourth bolt oh, there, and the fourth bolt just in there so it should be a matter of those four bolts off um, pipes off obviously as well as four pipes um, and then it should pull away um, and from there I've got the new part and it should be got also got a new little dash gasket to go with it as well and then we should be able to put the new part on and in theory refill the coolant and we should be golden now the only thing is that the mechanic did warn me that those bolts um, they only look about a 6mm um, and he said you need to be really careful trying to get those off otherwise you can shear them um, I think he described them as being made of cheese um, which isn't great so we just want a small wrench, not too much torque um, and gently do it. I bathed all of the bolts overnight in a uh, in a in a big chunk of uh, of WD forty to hopefully penetrate them and loosen them off a little bit. So we'll see how we go. I'd like to be able to just do it and, and do it myself. And then once I've done that, I can sort out and look at the pannier. Um, if it looks like they're not going to come off or it looks like they're going to shear, this is going to be a really short video because that'll be that, and then I'll have to um, see if I can get a mobile bike mechanic or um, I'll see if I can get another way to get it to be recovered to a, to a bike shop and, and get them to do the work. But this will be the quickest, easiest and much more cost effective way. So let's see how we go. on. Right, so I think we're going to start with the bottom and give those a go. Let's see if we can just make sure we get the exact correct size. Because what I don't want is anything that's, any, that's too big or too small that's going to potentially thread the head off the board. Okay, so we're looking like you're talking a 10 mil, which is fine. So I do have a bigger socket set than what I'm using, but I'm deliberately using a small one just to limit the amount of torque that I'm going to be able to put on this bolt. Right. Now let's start here and see what happens. Let's see how tight this is. Okay, that's a positive. Nice. Okay, we've got a little bit of water seepage, so that's a good sign. That's a good sign. Okay, I do think we're probably going to need a bucket though, so bear with me. Okay, so we've got a little tray underneath, just down here, which just should help a little bit. Um, just to clarify one thing as well, that I would... I would actually probably take the pipes off first before I start um, removing any of these bolts but I wasn't 100% convinced how easily these bolts are going to come out so I'm going to try each one of the four bolts first make sure I can get them loosened without um, without any problems and then I'm going to just gently nip them back up again and then I'm going to start to work on the pipes what I don't want to do is remove all of the pipes um, because I think that if I do this bit here where it's gone I think as soon as I take off this um, cell pipe retainer there I think that the whole thing underneath will shatter it's that rusted through and if I do that and can't get the four bolts off then I'm in a situation where I can't even start the bike 
to try and move it up onto a trailer. So if I do it this way, although it doesn't seem intuitive, it just means that then I can check on the bolts first, make sure the bolts are good and I can get them off. And then from there, uh, I can start working on the, uh, on the other bit. So that's one, one out of four. Let's try it number two. Again, just gentle with it. Not too much power, not too much torque. Just really, just gently working it back out. It's definitely moving, the second one. Uh, and there we go, there's a problem straight away. That's exactly what the, uh, what the guy said might happen. As gentle as I was being there, the bolt's completely sheared in half. So that's not great. This bolt also doesn't feel like it's turning properly. Uh, maybe it might be wrong. Oh no, that one definitely is. So that one's not too bad. And then the fourth is tucked in here between these pipes. Now, what we're going to do about that bolt that's in there and sheared, I don't know. I guess it'll depend on what it looks like. Okay, so that third one's also off there as well. So it's just that one. I don't know whether that's jammed in the block, in the actual uh, pump itself, or what. But, I think with those three off, it's worth at least trying to get these pipes off um, and then I'll see where we are. So I'm going to get a screwdriver, I'm going to get these pipes off the front and maybe give a little tap with a mallet and, uh, and see where we are. Um, I'll take the camera back on again in a sec um, when we get a bit of an overview of what's going on. Okay, so we've got the new wall pump cover on, albeit with only three bolts, but that's enough. Well, if it's enough to keep the water in, the bolt that's damaged is the one that's at the top, um, which I would imagine would be under the least amount of stress because of gravity. I appreciate the water pump throws uh, the water around as it's passing around the system, but you would I would still assume that the one at the top, the very, very top, um, probably under less stress than some of the bottom. Certainly when I was cranking things off, it's the ones at the bottom that are. Um, with the one we're inside to leak from. Uh, again, granted the engine wasn't running. Um, also, it's one of the little bolts that just holds itself into the water pump. It's not one of the big bolts that goes right the way through, that like torsions it back onto the actual, well, not the block, but it certainly goes past the, it might actually be the block, it certainly goes through the water pump. So those two are both intact, so they're going to be the strongest ones. So we'll see. Um, I'll show you where we are at the minute. I'm idling now for about five, six minutes and Put a little piece of paper underneath, um, which will obviously show up nicely if there's any uh, spots of blue from the from the coolant that's in it. Now there's none there yet, but to be fair, as you can see, you know, the, the temperature, the coolant gauge is still very much at the bottom. So if I twitch the main pipe here off the radiator, it's still stone cold. So I don't know a great deal about bike mechanics, but I'm assuming it has a thermostat in it somewhere, same as a car would. So I'm guessing at the moment the thermostat hasn't opened, and therefore. I don't know. Having said that, the pipe at the top is warm, so I'm assuming there must be water flowing through the water pump. Again, feel free to put something in the comments if you like. It explains what an idiot I'm being, but you know, certainly the uh, pipe at the front there is definitely hot, and that goes into there. The water pump itself is warm. So I'm assuming that there is hot water running through that, but as such, there's no leaks, but Again, I'd want to see that get right up to operating temperature. I'd want to see the fan be spinning, and I'd still want to see no coolants for a good 15, 20 minutes before I'd be um, inclined to take her out on a ride. Why that's ticking over though, problem number two, which I suspect is going to be as equally annoying to fix, is with the pannier lock. So, this is the left hand side pannier. So, if you take a look in the lock there, you can see that part of the mechanism is pushed to the side on there. Now this lock is technically opened, keys in and we're unlocked. Now if we go to the other side pannier, which is exactly the same in unlocked, 
you'll see straight away you can see oh, hopefully you have more of the metal but also when you press it the catch goes in and it bites and there's play and movement there come around this side and there's nothing these are rock solid so that's obviously why the pannier isn't locking because the mechanism's already classed as locked the issue with that is how on earth does anybody get into that to try and work out the lock mechanism sits under here um, right back under there behind what I can only imagine is an awful lot of um, fairings and bike covers and I think this isn't going to be fun I've got a sinking feeling that looking at this pannier lock is going to be really really difficult to try and access so while the bike's ticking over while we're checking the coolant make sure there's no leaks um, and make sure it, um, it doesn't all here or anything like that I need to try and see if I can find a guide or something online about how we access this lock um, yeah so here we go I don't know if you can hear that but we've just got up to temperature and the fans are on if you can hear them and we still don't have a mark on the paper no drips or anything from it she stays well within the being cool. Also might have just noticed in the shot there seem to have sorted out the issue with the panniers after a lot of fiddling. Now whilst it doesn't work perfectly it does actually work. So I don't know if you can see there but there's a little notch. So what's supposed to happen is they're supposed to spring back. So that little pin, pin bit there is supposed to push right back and it's not. It's the same there to get further out that one. So what it requires is just slide it back with your finger you slide it back with your finger and then the pannier will shut good and then perfect but at least it means that the bike's actually usable and the pannier shuts again there because she's just sitting idling and she's up to temperature fans off again I can't smell anything any coolant still no coolant leaking there that's why we're here that's the old one you can see the magnitude of the problem there. Completely rotten that one. Not much left at all. Compared to the new shiny. So no leaks. Still. But to be fair, this is only sitting in idling. And she's holding temperature and not causing a problem. Now that the panic is fixed, that's, a, that's another good thing as well. So, she's up to temperature, she's holding temperature, and she isn't leaking. As yet, perfect. Pannier now fixed and closed. Oh, I say fixed, working and closed. I wouldn't class it as fixed, but it's definitely working. So I think the only thing to do is, while the weather's fairly pleasant, take it on a little bit of a test ride, see how we go. Keep an eye on the coolant level. It's just, um, it's just under the top. Pannier just kicked in again. up the little uh, little cover at the bottom go and get my gear on it's half past ten in the morning go and take it for a little bit of a drive around the block or so keep an eye on the cooling keep an eye on the temperature i might leave the little fairing cover on the other side if you're not familiar with the uh, nt 7 it's one of these and on the other side that's where the cooling bottle is just behind that one so you can see it's just under the upper mat So what I'll probably do is just leave that fairing piece off whilst I'm on the ride just like keep, keep an eye on the coolant and make sure it's not dropping anywhere. I'll stop a couple of times and, uh, and just make sure it's so off. I'll let you know how we go, but potentially some positive news after a couple of weeks where I've been off for a while. But a little bit of a gentle test ride, see what happens. Okay, so a little bit of an update on the bike repair. After I got the uh, cover bolted down, no leaks or anything like that even though all the bolts aren't technically in. 
but there wasn't any leaks. But what did happen was when I went out on a bike ride, a little test, the temperature got cooler and cooler and cooler, and then it dropped flat off the bottom of the um, flat off the bottom of the temperature gauge, and she was just running ice cold. Well, according to the temperature gauge, uh, the engine was still, you could feel the heat coming off it, but as far as it was concerned, the temperature gauge was cold. Turned out that there was a big airlock um, in the bike. So, just topped it up um, and then went in through the side fairing there, to get access to the radiator cap. Topped up through the radiator cap and she still took a fair bit of, um, easily took another one and a half litres. Um, so I topped her up with that. And then it got to the point where she was actually getting some coolant in her then, like some temperature into her on idle. So she was going up but then she went up to halfway and sat at about three quarters and the coolant pads were on permanently. And they didn't seem to be able to control it. So then I'm thinking she's probably still got an airlock somewhere in the system. So I, I remember reading somewhere on a forum or a, or a book somewhere, I, don't, I can't remember where, that if that happens a good idea is, or something to try, is to get her up to temperature, put her on the centre stand, leave the radiator cap off and just rock her backwards and forwards. Um, and see if you can get it a burr, really. Um, I also noticed that when I touched the radiator, that there were spots of the radiator that were uh, hot and other spots that were cold, so again, another sign of an airlock that there's air in the system and the water isn't getting right through the radiator. So anyway, rocked on the side, stand for about two or three minutes, and then she gave a massive boom, boom out, of the, uh, out of the radiator cap, splotted up a load of air, a little bit of ejected, a little bit of coolant at the time. I was you know, standing way away from it because I kind of hoping that would happen. Um, refilled up the coolant level, put the cap back on, let her cool down, let her warm up and now she's, um, as it stands at the minute, touch wood, uh, back behaving in the sense that all of the radiator gets warm at a consistent level now so I know the water's flowing through it which suggests there's no air locks. Nothing leaking, nothing dropping out of the bottom of her uh, and more importantly she gradually and slowly gets up to halfway, gauge just touches smidge above halfway, cooling fans come on as they have done now. As I'm watching I can see the gauge coming back down, getting under control again. Drops down with just below half um, and then the uh, you can actually feel the radiator get cooler as the fans are on um, and then the um, fans put off as they just have then and then she idles again and we go through this cycle which is much more normal. Still need to go and take her for a little bit of a, another run and just make sure that's the case and then obviously keep an eye on the coolant, top up as needed just in case there's any remaining airlocks but fingers crossed and touch wood, she might be about ready for me to actually start enjoying again before, the, before we lose the weather for, uh, for the leftovers, what's left of summer and autumn so keep you informed but as it stands we, we might be okay. So after the um, after the, the last test that I did, where I said that everything looked fine and the temperatures were good and there was no leaks, um, well I woke up the next morning and there was a leak, a little pool on the floor, just down here. So I checked all of the new bits that were put on and there was nothing there, traced the leak up and it was coming from up the top of the crankcase. Looked around, hunted, hunted, hunted and found out that unfortunately it was coming from the tube coolant tube that joins between the um between both of the v's I had a google online found out that that was a fairly common or appears to be a common problem on these honda v twins it's going to be quite expensive to get somebody to fix it so i decided to have it go myself that's why the bike's in the state that it is so she's completely stripped down, naked wise. So it involved taking dashboard cowl off, surrounds for the dashboard, both of the top pockets off, seat, and both fairings off to be able to get to it. And it was an absolute pain in the backside um, to try and get it off, but it's off. It was the two little O-rings which had gone all a little bit hard and crusty, replaced those, started it, ticking it, and this time now it definitely doesn't seem like it leaks, so I'm going to put it all back together, put the fairings back on, 
take it for a bit of a ride tomorrow. I've got to go into the office at work tomorrow, so I'll take the bike for a little bit of a ride, take some spare coolant just in case. But it was leaking even when the engine wasn't running, and um, it was just it was just weeping out with the top out with that coolant pipe. So the fact that it isn't now, even when it's running, and isn't when it's off, suggests that fingers crossed that might be it, and I can actually get back to enjoying the bike and using it. But we'll see how it goes. So this will hopefully be the final update around the bike. So I drove it up to the office yesterday, uh, where I work, which is about 30, 38 miles, one way, 38 miles back. A um, mix of um, some sort of um, high speed dual carriageways and then a little bit on the final approach, um, sort of industrial stop start driving. Um, didn't use any coolant, didn't drop any coolant. Come out this morning and although there's rain on the floor, there isn't any coolant pools and this is where so where they were coming, this is just a little bit of rain from last night, nothing there. So fingers crossed, that means that everything's done inside um, and the bike's usable again. I did notice that there's that there's quite a few little bits that I want to tidy up, so I'm going to bookmark those for, for over the winter period. There's little bits of the of the frame I found at the front when I took the fairings off that I want to just you know tidy up a little bit and get some protection on there just to stop them rusting through and um, there's little bits of some of the panels that I removed that I really want to um, um, give a bit of a once over and uh, sand them back and put some plastic primer on them and some plastic paint just to tidy it up a little bit. Um, and there's also one of the latches um, from the panniers that looked like it was fixed but in reality probably isn't. Um, so there's a little few jobs but most importantly for the rest of the of the um, what's left of, of, of autumn I guess. Um, the bike's in a position where I can actually ride it and go and enjoy it. So that's going to be the plan. Um, thanks for watching and um, you know, like and, um, and subscribe if you'd like to. And there'll be more videos coming as and when I, there's a need to do them. Thanks very much.